Sherry Goodman is a public policy fellow with the Wilson Center's Environmental Change and Security Program and also the Global Women's Leadership Initiative. Ruth Greenspan Bell is also a public policy fellow with the Environmental Change and Security Program. Welcome to NOW. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I want to talk to you first about uh, an article that you co-authored, an opinion piece, a couple weeks ago, where before we knew who would be the new designee for general secretary at the UN, you were advocating that it be someone who is an expert on climate change and who would make that a priority. Didn't turn out that way. Are we disappointed? Well, I'm not sure we're disappointed because I actually think that uh, Mr. Gutierrez has actually quite an interesting background. In, uh, and understands the connections between climate change and, in fact, security issues. Uh, he gave a really kind of remarkable presentation to the Security Council in his capacity as High Commissioner for Refugees, um, and it was all about climate change and how climate change was accelerating and making more difficult every single one of the challenges that they were already facing. It was worth reading, and it strongly demonstrated that he does get it, and I think that's uh, quite a good sign. And, and Sherry, in the article, you outlined a, a list of upcoming potential problems that are only going to get worse before they get better that the UN will have to address in some way or another. Could you talk to us about what some of those are? Sure, thank you. Um, the point we wanted to ins underscore in the article is the importance of putting climate change front and center in addressing today's security challenges today's challenges, and I think the next Secretary General does get that um, with the remarks he made on the importance of addressing the refugee challenge, some of which is climate driven. Mm -hmm. And as we've seen the increase in extreme weather events around the world, uh, from recent hurricanes in our own country to devastating storms in Asia, combined with sea level rise and coastal inundation, as well as droughts that underlie many of the conflicts uh, that are ongoing within the Middle East and within Africa. Uh, we face a world that is becoming destabilized by climate forces. And that is a challenge that the next Secretary General will have to confront. Is it fair to say that we really can't talk about any of these issues in isolation, that the dots connect at some point? Uh, and I think that was part of one, of one of his points to the Security Council that they are intimately connected and interwoven into. They make every challenge already almost impossible challenges that the UN faces uh, even that much more difficult. What, what are your expectations for the UN in general as far as its role in addressing climate change? Do, do you see it on the short list of, of fundamental and necessary leadership or is it somewhere in the mix? That's what I'm trying to figure out. You know, Are these individual nations that we need to be most aggressive in leading and taking action? Or is the UN the perfect vehicle for collective action? Well, it is both that, but it's not exclusively that. The UN is, is a forum for mobilizing global action and the work that's been ongoing there for over a decade led to the very successful agreement in Paris last year to um, set individual nationally determined limits on climate change. And that's an important first step, but there's much more work that needs to be done the next challenge that this, the new Secretary General has already identified is the, clim is the refugee crisis mm -hmm. um, that has some underlying climate roots. And then the next big challenge after that is water. Water is the front line of climate change. Either too much water in some places with storms and floods or too little water in many key regions of the world leading to um, droughts that lead to food scarcity that have led to rapid increases in famine and infant mortality. And that also sows the seeds for terrorist groups to come in and take over. The instability creates fertile ground, is that it? Yes, it does. So these places, are, we're not talking about something that might happen eventually. Are we talking about things oh. that are happening as we speak? Absolutely. We're talking about things that have already happened. We now know um, that the prolonged drought in Syria um, that began in 2011 was one of the forces underlying the conflagration and the instability that, now, that that country now faces. And we also know that drought and food shortages from Russia, when it uh, stopped exporting wheat, led to reductions in available food 
in North Africa that led to the upri Arab uprisings and the Arab Spring. So we now know that all these forces are connected and that we need to do a better job in getting in front of that problem. When you say we, Sherry, are you talking about experts in the field, scientists? I'm wondering, do pol public policymakers, uh, do they also have that same level of awareness that you're describing? Well, if I can just add in there, I, one of the examples that the, uh, the uh, that, uh, soon to be Secretary General gave was Darfur as an example of a, of a uh, uh, climate and weather-induced uh, crisis that, you know, exploded into people's faces. Ruth, do, we, do you see him as the exception to the rule, or is, does he represent a growing body of, a, of connecting of dots where people get this in the way that you're describing it? Well, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I do know that one thing that's been very important, let me just sort of slightly answer this by going back to an earlier sure. question of yours. Of course, there's a separate body in the UN that has, is designated to come up with global uh, solutions to this problem, and that's the UNFCCC. Um, but we saw with, say, Ban Ki-moon, for example, how instrumental he was in pushing that body and pushing the countries leading up to Paris to really get to it and, and, and craft solutions. And so I think it's kind of, you know, there's, there are a lot of people who have to play in this. Uh, whether everybody gets it, that these things are connected, well, we have an election going on right now where we see that there are some people who don't get these connections domestically. But I think gradually people are getting the picture that these are connected. Are, are we building momentum now in a way that is uh, uh, different from what we've seen, say, over the past decade? I think so, a absolutely. I mean, now that you have um, the president, for example, President Obama recognizing climate change as a threat multiplier, saying it is the most serious existential threat we face, um, even more so, he said, we will defeat terrorism, but, but cl the climate crisis is one that is really a global challenge of, uh, on an even grander scale. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we see leaders, wise leaders, um, who recognize this. The challenge is to mobilize the full range of forces needed to address it. It's not any single government, and it's not just government alone. Um, the private sector, as we saw in Paris, um, the mobilization of private sector leaders and enterprise to address and advance clean energy solutions to the climate challenge is going to be critically important. And those public-private partnerships are going to be equally important in addressing the refugee crisis and water security challenges. Before we close, I want to ask each of you to, to uh, share some final thoughts on things you'll be watching in the coming months where we might anticipate uh, either some action or some changes in approaches. Are there areas of the globe, specific regions, or specific policy initiatives or things that uh, you could tell us about? Well, I think a very promising thing happened this last week with the HFC, with the decision under the Montreal Protocol to move on HFCs, which are a very potent uh, greenhouse gas problem. Um, and I think what I hope to see increasingly is what's been going on under the Obama administration, under the UN processes of trying to find avenues and places where you can solve specific problems um, and move on those and gain trust among all the parties involved that you can resolve these issues, that you can get agreement, that you can uh, attack a piece of the problem here and attack a piece of the problem there. And hopefully with, you know, new leadership and guidance in the uh, UN, uh, with somebody who comes out of a slightly different world, uh, that will, he will see new opportunities and hopefully pursue those. Sure. Well, let me also underscore the importance of the agreement reached on um, hydrofluorocarbons in Kigali uh, that was part of the Montreal Protocol. 20 years ago, uh, when the Montreal Protocol was first coming into force, uh, American industry and the American military were among the leaders in developing the technology substitutes for the earlier generation of ozone-depleting chemicals. And it was that leadership and that innovation and ingenuity of the American spirit, and I'm sure occurred in other places around the globe too, that has led to a whole new generation of substitutes uh, for, so that we've now largely closed the hole in the ozone layer. Now we have to take on the next challenge, which is these very fast-moving 
um, climate, uh, climate pollutants uh, in the HFCs. But I have no doubt that uh, industry and our military can be leaders in finding substitutes for those uh, substances as well. well, we're, seeing well huge sorry, advances. we're seeing huge advances in solar, in uh, tremendous work going on in uh, battery capacity. All of those are different pieces of making the tipping point comes the major to mind, uh, the tipping point theory, and when we might suddenly realize we've reached one in these areas. Well, we are on the verge of becoming the clean energy superpower, yeah. and that's, that's a wonderful thing. Well, well, thank you. I have to say, over the years of addressing this topic, we've often ended on a very pessimistic note, <laughs> but today is very different. You're, you're providing a lot of hope that progress is being made. Sherry Ruth, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.